everyone. I'm here today with Elsa Jaworski. How are you? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on with me today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Tahoe 200, which you came second in, which is absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. Um, do you want to tell me about your introduction to running and what drew you towards more endurance level activities? Yeah, so um, my entire family runs and we got into it because my mom um, in her late 20s was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes. And at the time, uh, the American Diabetes Association was training for the London Marathon. Um, and so she kind of just stepped into it and my dad joined her in that pursuit. And then our entire family kind of just grew up running. Um, so mainly road running growing up. And I, I grew up in Florida, so not a whole lot of a trail access. Um, and then ended up moving out to Utah a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, part of a really awesome women's trail group out here, one of the Wasatch and uh, started seeing them do like these crazy, awesome, like feats. Um, and I was like, I think I can do this too. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a fun way to be able to play outside for hours at a time. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Um, what have been some of your favorite races that you've competed in? Ooh, um, it's kind of a hard one. I feel like I haven't done a ton of races. Um, I think I think my favorite so far has been um, they have a couple of different versions of it throughout the U.S., but it's the Running Up for Air series. Mm -hmm. Um, so started by Jared Campbell, who's who's local to Salt Lake. Um, but the Rufa is what we call it, like for short, um, the Grandeur Peak. It's just, it's a really cool local race. And, um, you know, it's just laps of Grandeur Peak and it's timed. Um, and so you get to see the same people again and again. Um, and it's just like community building and um, I love Grandeur. So it's a, it's a fun time. Amazing. What was your training like kind of leading up to the 200 miler then? Because I'm sure you kind of had to put a lot of things to the side maybe to to train for something that long yeah I've done I've done one 100 prior um so the training I feel like didn't look a whole lot different just because I, I feel like you can't do a whole lot more um I don't have a coach I kind of just wing everything <laughs> um but yeah I I think like for me um I actually got off the wait list for Tahoe um in May I think is when they started rolling everything out so I wasn't 100% sure it's going to be doing it but I was I was still training for 100 in June at the time um and kind of just shifted focus a little bit to just slowing down my running and getting used to like hiking a lot yeah um yeah I mean it's definitely hard right balancing like full-time work and friends and and trying to train for something that's going to take you days um so yeah, some of the, some of that stuff kind of got pushed to the side a little bit. Like if my company is listening, no, it didn't. <laughs> um, but I've been nice thing is that a bunch of my friends do this, you know, crazy shenanigans. So like the, the social life doesn't often come at, at the same price. Um, so I get to do it with them. Um, so yeah, I'd say the training was, it's a lot. Um, I'm, I'm hungry for miles all the time. Like if I could hit a hundred miles every week, I'd be a happy girl. <laughs> um, so just a lot of like back-to-back -back long runs. I think eight miles is a perfect distance. So uh, a weekly or a daily eight mile run for me is like chef's kiss. Um, so yeah, I'd say like a lot of like eight miles, just easy. I don't, I believe speed work works, but I don't believe in it for me personally. So I like, <laughs> um, I call it ADPP, which is all day party pace. Um, and so I just I run the same pace every single day for every single run. Um, so it's just a lot of like just slow, easy chatting with friends. Um, I didn't really like focus too much on vert because Tahoe doesn't have like anything crazy. Um, just kind of got used to being out for like extended periods of time and just running really tired. So amazing. Tell me about Tahoe 200 then. What what is it? What's it about? Um how did you hear about it? Yeah, I, I honestly don't even remember. I, I've had a couple of friends who've done like the longer distance, like Cocodona 250. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, oh, this seems like insane. This is like the next level up from 100. Um, and so I was actually originally looking at Bigfoot mm -hmm. um, 200. So part of the destination um, series. And I don't remember why I didn't end up like applying for the lottery for it but I applied for the lottery for Tahoe I think just from like a timing perspective mm -hmm. um 
and then it looks like I wasn't going to get off the list because, uh, you know, I posted on the Facebook group and I was pretty high up on, on the wait list, but with all the snow that we've had this year, mm -hmm. um, they ended up pushing out the dates. And so when I got that email. I was like, hell yeah. I'm yeah. Really excited. <laughs> um, yeah. So 200 miles, I think it's 205. A lot of us clocked like just over 210. Um, so I, I don't know all of us. I think it was like closer to 210, but the RD is like, no, it's just your watch thing off. I'm going to take what my Strava is telling me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, about like just over 200 miles, uh, like 30, 35, 36 K vert, um, all along like Tahoe rim trail, more or less. Um, yeah. So like a, a small out and back section to start to get you to 60 and then another out and back to like 130 or so, and you head back. So it's a lot on the same course. Um, but, you know, very different times of day, very different states of mind. So mm -hmm. um, got to got to see the course in a couple of different ways, which is fun. And I'd, I'd never been to Lake Tahoe before. Um, so a really, really cool way to see Lake, Lake Tahoe. Amazing. Um, so did you have any kind of strategy going into the race or was it kind of your AADP kind of that's what we're going to be doing? <laughs> like, yeah, I had no idea what to expect. And like I said, I don't really work with a coach. I just kind of like assume that I can wing most things. And so it's like, I don't know, I've done 100 before and I've been like done 24 hour races before. It's just like that, but more, I think. Um, I was a little bit worried about the sleep deprivation piece because I've never like hallucinated while running before mm -hmm. um so it was like that's gonna be an unknown but I had like the most amazing crew and pacers um my my group came out in full force so I was like okay well if they're by my side we'll we'll just figure it out like it'll just be fun um and for me I try to focus as much on like you know there are very few people that get paid in the like ultra running world so like I'm paying to do this sport like 99% of the time right so um, if I'm paying to show up to do these things, I might as well have like a good time. Yeah. Um, and so that, I think that helps a little bit in terms of strategy of like, okay, the strategy is a, to finish and B to have fun. So like whatever I need to do to like, keep those two things, like the main objective is, is what I want to be doing. So, um, sometimes, you know, I make people make me do a cartwheel, you know, something just like shift my perspective and just like kind of shake things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to go out like feeling good and then be a little bit conservative and just kind of keep trucking. Um, try not to stay at any of the aid stations too, too long. Um, but I think it was like the aid, or aid station, oh God, I can't remember, the Village Green, um, which is like around 100 or so. I was feeling like pretty, pretty beat up. It was super hot on the first like Saturday or on Saturday, the, the second day of the race. And a lot of people were, were struggling in the heat. Um, and I was like 30 or something hours in, I was just like pretty, pretty beat. Um, and I wanted to keep going, but, uh, one of the, the volunteers at the aid station was like, just, just lay down for a couple minutes. So I laid down on the cots that they had and, uh, like took like a 10 or 15 minute nap and like woke up and, you know, was starting to get my stuff and was like, oh my God, I have a hundred, like, I still have a hundred miles left to go and like felt horrible. And so I started getting up and I like immediately felt like super dizzy, super fatigued. And somebody was like, just sleep for another 30 minutes, see if that helps. So I laid down for like 25 minutes, woke up and was like, let's fucking go. Let's go. <laughs> let's do this thing. Um, so it's, it's crazy what like, you know, 20, 20 minutes of sleep can, can kind of change everything for you. Um, so uh, originally I think my strategy was to like sleep only when it was necessary. So like, as if I'm like falling asleep, like while running or like feel so exhausted that I needed to. Um, and I still did that for the most part. I was really hoping not to sleep at any of the aid stations, but I slept at, at two of them. Um, but at that point, I was like, like I said, the goal is to finish and have fun. So I was like, okay, well, if this is going to make me finish and have fun, let's sleep. Like, let's, <laughs> let's take care of ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Um, I've always found like, you know, sometimes the people at the aid stations, like they know you better than what you like need <laughs> right now. So you'll be like, go, go, go. And they'll be like, just no. sit down. <laughs> eat this yes and Close that's why eyes. they're there that's why they're there eat this that was my next question what sort of things were you eating while you were out there yeah um I did a lot of like spring energy um 
and a lot of mac and cheese my uh like one of my crew members nick absolutely killed it i had like probably eight sticks of butter in every like craft mac and cheese that i made um because that was like the only thing that was standing good normally i'm okay eating real foods but i was just like i was struggling a bit um but i also eat every like 45 minutes um have an alarm that goes off uh and so i'm just trying to like you know, swallow as much food as I possibly can in any given, any given time period. So yeah, a lot of spring, a lot of huma, um, a lot of basically a lot of gels, just like whatever can go down pretty easy. Um, and then when I am at the aid stations, like quesadillas, mac and cheese, whatever, like real food that I can try to get like some actual more substantial calories, pizza. Mm, all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I honestly, like I had no idea how I was going to do. Um, so it really like wasn't part of the of the mentality. Um, just because I was like, I, I could blow up, <laughs> you know, like I feel good, but who knows what the next 10 miles is gonna hold. Yeah. Um, and I think like when you put less pressure on yourself, you end up like you tend to do a lot better, at least for me, like personally speaking. Um, and for me, like it's really never been about the competition. Um, I'm just like I've done competitive running for it. So um and I always like kind of put in like a weird taste in my mouth. Like if I can just go out and have a fun time and, and be silly. And then sometimes I do well, you know, and you end up on the podium and that's, that's cool. Um, but I don't think like any of that was really ever, you know, the intention of like, oh, c- could I place? It's like, oh, that's awesome that it happened. And we also had like a kick-ass time. So, <laughs> hell yeah. Amazing. So what would you say, uh, you already mentioned like sleep deprivation and stuff, but were there any other aspects of the race you kind of felt that you struggled with a little bit? Um, yeah, the sleep deprivation piece was, I mean, like it's it's tricky to understand like when you really need, I think the entirety of like ultra running, right? Is like, how much do I push versus like, wh- where is that line? Mm-hmm. Like, where's the line and when is it okay to cross? Um, and so, yeah, the, the sleep deprivation piece was hard. Um there were a couple of sections like looking back on now that I'm like, I wonder if I could have run like a little bit more of that. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I, I had one section with a pacer of mine that um, was like probably 130 to 150 or something like that. And we got back and got back to the crew after we finished. I was like, well, that was kind of like a glorified hike. She was like, no, that was a hike. <laughs> we walked <laughs> all of it. And I was like, well, I guess we did. <laughs> um so I think like some of that you know you learn as as you go and you know if you do multiple of them you kind of know better for next time um I had a lot of water so I think that that helped um it's hard I mean your pack is just so heavy for something like that because you have to carry so much stuff and I really didn't train with like a heavy vest and like luckily it didn't it didn't hurt me too much um but like maybe some more training as far as that goes is good I think the one piece and I don't really know how you you prevent it or you do it better is like you have no idea like race day or you know day of like what food is going to sound good and what's not going to sound good and it's just expensive to get a bunch of different running nutrition but like I think just and I think that comes with like over time and multiple years of practicing of like okay let me get a ton of food and just have it ready because like sometimes you get to the aid station you're like I cannot look at another like awesome sauce spring again for the rest of my life you know (laughs) something went wrong yeah um so I think like some of those things are hard and that makes it harder to pivot like during the race when your vest is like filled with like two or three flavors of something um so then you're just kind of like gagging it down the entire (laughs) time um so what did it feel like crossing the finish line Oh my God. It was incredible. I, uh, I'm super lucky. I had like, I don't even know how many people, like 10 to 12 people on my crew. Um, and, um, I ran with like my, my best running friend, Justine Hewitt, who is also like an incredible, incredible runner. Um, and she, she ran 50 miles with me after she had paced 25 miles at high lonesome, like the day before flew out and came and paced. So like automatically just having her there, like the entire, like last 50 was like super special um to share share those miles with her and so like as soon as I saw her I was like we're gonna finish like we've got this thing and so like that in itself was like pretty emotional um and (laughs) I'd like to say I was in better spirits for the last like two miles of the race but I I swear there was some gnarly climbs I mean looking back they're probably like 200 300 feet gain for the last (laughs) two miles but I was like where's the finish like I'm so ready to be there I'm so tired um, but finally, once we could like see the finish, it was like, oh my God, we could see it from so far away. And, you know, we could start to hear, 
um, my crew out there and um, the cowbells and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Justine and I have like held hands during races before. So I was like, we have to hold hands. We have to do it. Um, so yeah, crossing was super fun. And like I said, we just tried to keep it a party. I've made a, a couple of music videos during some of the races that I've done. And so this was no exception to the rule. Um, and so my crew was dressed up like absurdly and, um, you know, it was super hype as I came through and I've been like doing like flossing, like the dance move, like the yeah. floss a lot recently. And so we like, we did that once we crossed too, and just, you know, got to keep it fun the whole time. So, um, but yeah, it was like, it was super emotional. Like it, it something that wasn't like, I'd been on my radar, but you know, like I said, I got in kind of last minute. Um, and so like be able to do something like that, like, I don't know, I think everybody is capable of like doing ultras, you know, if you, if you have the right mindset and like, you know, I'd done my first road marathon a couple of years ago and I didn't start doing trail stuff until, you know, not even three years ago. Um, and like struggled through my first like 50 K, you know, so like it's possible at some point all running hurts, but like to be able to see the progress over time is like super impactful and meaningful. Um, so yeah, it felt, it felt so good. And then I was just ready to sit down. It's like, I, <laughs> I need to take a seat for more than 25 minutes or, or whatever. <laughs> wow um that's amazing kind of you so inspirational just kind of as a young woman to kind of be already kind of coming up really really well in the running scene um you know the average age of an ultra marathon runner is like between the ages of like 35 and 40 um so it's really like it's lovely to see more younger people coming through um mm -hmm. how do you hope to kind of inspire more you know younger people to get out into the wilderness and run more yeah, yeah. So like I had mentioned earlier, we've got our, our running group out here, Women of the Lost Edge. And I think like we've been really intentional about, you know, like it's it's no drop. Um, or we've got we call them party pacers at the back. And so yeah, like you always have a place, um, you belong on the trail, whatever, even if you're walking the whole thing, like that's fine, that's trail running too. Um, so I think just like creating a more inclusive environment to make sure like if you want to be doing this, like you you belong out here and you should be doing it. Um, so I think just like continuing to create that safe space for women um, out on trail is like definitely one of my my biggest things. And then, um, you know, secondarily, I um, I try to raise a lot of money or like, uh, you know, highlight certain causes when I do races, just because like it's a it's a ludicrous thing to be running 50 miles, 100 miles, 200, whatever the distance is. So like it kind of catches people's attention, I think. So like if you can be like, oh, hey, like here's this awesome cause, like that I'm doing this thing for. Um, I've had a lot of like success in, in raising some money for, for those, um, you know, different organizations that I've tried to highlight. So I think for me, like my future forward and running is really like continuing to create safe spaces for women. And then, you know, highlighting these organizations that I, I think are meaningful to me um, and continuing to have fun dancing on the trail when we can. Um, I don't know, like, distance and all that kind of stuff because like you said I've, I've got a couple hopefully a couple of years ahead of me um and I, I definitely don't want to want to burn out and I think I, I tend to have an addictive personality and and dive <laughs> dive in pretty fast so I'm like okay where's the where's the delicate balance of uh doing fun things and also not um hating it in a couple years from now <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I completely agree with that um what's your recovery been like kind of following the race yeah, my feet were like not too bad, but like a little bit mangled, just like a pretty gnarly blister on the bottom of my foot. So that forced me to take like a week off, but my body felt like good. Like I think I've I've heard from a couple of different people like 200 recovery is a little easier just because you walk so much mm -hmm. that it's like you can do like a hundred and like really go for it and run a lot and you're kind of like destroyed afterwards. But this I was like, you know, a week later I'm back to to running like 80 something miles a week. Um, and so, yeah, I feel good. We're back. Um, so it's kind of cruising right along. I'm sure like this would be the beneficial point of like having a coach to tell me like, don't do exactly what I'm doing right now. Maybe <laughs> rest a little bit more, but I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional now about, I don't have any other races uh, on the calendar for like the rest of the year. So, um, trying to switch into like biking a little bit more and some other forms of movement that, uh, are not only running and that's hard because I, I like it so much. It's, it's my favorite. It's my go-to. So I don't know. We'll see if I'll be successful. It's probably going to change in a week from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank
thank you very much for coming on with me today. I've really appreciated talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, nice speaking with you. Bye.